Chris, welcome back Hi. to Linear Rock. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good to have you back to right. see you again. And so Thank great to have me. some new Daughtry music to present here tonight. Uh, and uh, as I just recalled, uh, your very first album, Daughtry, and we go a little bit back in time, became yeah. the fastest selling rock debut album in SoundScan history in the United States. Uh, is it still like a flagship to carry? Or does, you know, the beautiful, let's call it beautiful nightmare, you know, uh, of having such a record renew itself, you know, each time a new release come, you know, for you guys? I mean, is it better uh, not to have, you know, such a bang so immediately when you intend to build a long career or not? Which is your point? <sighs> You know, I, I try not to chase any of it um, anymore. I think I think uh, I I'm very grateful for the flash in the pan. Uh, I'm grateful for the big bang, and I I want to let that be that. Um, I, I I think trying to chase that is a big mistake um, for any artist. I think being honest with who you are, where you are in that moment is i is i what i think the audience deserves to hear and um whether that's five million records or five thousand you know I, i i do think um it's best to to present them with your art in the most honest form and that's what we're doing with this record and uh so far we've been very very happy with the response we're getting so um Will it do five million records? You know, uh, yeah. does anything does anything sell five mil million records anymore? Um, you know, yeah, sure. Kinda, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you know, we just uh, we just want our fans to be happy, and we want to be proud of what we created. What's happening in Daughtry Camp right now? You released two singles within the last year, let's say, but the album is still in the can. It's been delayed, I guess, due to the pandemic and uh, so on. Is it ready? When is it coming out finally? How is it? And do you have a definitive title to give us? Uh, it is in. It is finished. Uh, it was not. Um, it wasn't delayed. I just think the pandemic allowed us more time to work on it, which. You know, when you're when you're given more time, you 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 take it. And um, I think for that, it was it, it, it worked out great because we were able to really focus on the direction of this record and really uh, and not feel rushed and uh, by going out on tour or yeah. coming back in the studio and, and kind of going back and forth between tour mode and recording mode. And the world gave us plenty to write about. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and yes, we do have a definitive title. Mm -hmm. And I will say that all of that information will be released very, very, very soon. Okay, and do you have a date yeah. as well? A date, yes. you know, for the release, yes. but it's still uh, under secret? <laughs> it's under secret, uh, but not for long. Not All right. Long. Okay. Yeah, this is live, right? Right. Okay. So, uh, it will be very soon. Very okay. soon. Okay. We will keep an eye an eye on your social media. I'm trying to get as much as I can about you know yeah. these new songs and the new album. So, one question is: Is grunge still a major influence for you, and on the next album as well? Is it going to be there? Yeah, grunge has always been a huge influence for me. Um, I, I think I think as I get older, the more I kind of go back to those earlier records that made me excited to be a musician or made me want to pick up a guitar and made me want to be a rock singer. You know, those yeah. records like uh, Super Unknown, Bad Motor Finger, you know, from Soundgarden and Live, Throwing Copper and Secret Samadhi and Dirt and... Um, yeah facelift uh from Alice in Chains those were those were very um uh important records to me and 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 helped 
they were kind of building blocks for my style or or the you know the 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 way that I write um and I do think that there's a lot of that influence on this record but at the same time it still feels fresh to me mm -hmm. um and current but yeah it's it's my modern take on grunge <laughs> yeah that's a good one uh, yeah. right. <laughs> the new album is produced by scott stevens i read and is the first release since the split from rca uh the major label that you you, you just split it from in 2019. Uh, now that you simply have warner as a major distribution uh, do you leave it uh, kind of like a new beginning for the band yeah i i do it feels um you know i i'm very grateful for all the time that i was with rca and all the things that you know they did for me and the uh, opportunities they afforded me um and doing this record it's actually produced by two people i co-produced okay. scott stevens and marty fredrickson okay um, in which I've worked with many, many times over the years, uh, writing songs, and I just felt like they understood me as an artist, and they they understood me as a as a human being, and uh, I wanted them to to both do the record, and uh, yeah, I, I looked at this as a as a shedding of skin, so to speak. It was a I think it just happened to work out with you know. Uh, in a very transformative time in my life, I think, just with the pandemic and, you know, breaking away from RCA and given the opportunity to take a step back and to really think about what I wanted to do, you know, and what kind of record I want to make and what kind of records make me happy and excited and what kind of records, like I just said, made me want to do music in the first place. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I think this is a new beginning, so to speak. But at the same time, it's it's kind of what I've wanted to do all along um, in, in many ways. Uh, it just feels like the right record at the right time for us. Okay, when you say I, of course, you include the band. Uh, yes. Because yeah. it, it's, cause this is definitely a band. You once decided to shave your head completely in order to have the you know, attention just on the music. You said that. Um, so what about the beard? I, I, I did what? I shaved my head just to get the attention on the music? Yeah, that's what I read. Because you I, want to, you know, aesthetically to be just the music in front. Um, I have never said that. Um, I shaved my head because I was losing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's... Um, that's an interesting quote. No, I, I never said that, but um, the beard was <laughs> actually grown uh, originally because um, I was doing this role in a, um, in a Batman fan film as yeah. uh, Hugo Strange. And so I grew it out and then um, it was uh, like a week. Uh, no, 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 I started growing it out and then I needed to uh, shoot World on Fire video. And I was like, I think I'm just going to keep this beard. <laughs> um, I, I can't shave it yet because I got to film this, uh, this role. And uh, I just decided to keep it and it became it became my new thing, I guess. All right. I've done it. I've done it over the years you know here and there but i've never actually done it for an album cycle okay um, it's always been like I, I was too lazy to shave so i grew it out on tour or something and <laughs> but now it, it's 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 kind of stuck on me <laughs> allora, you recently took part in the tv show the mask the singer uh mm. 2019 edition. It was actually, it went also in Italy with, of course, an Italian cast. Uh, why did you decide to return on TV in such a particular um, show? What experience was that? And why the Rottweiler actually? Can we read the choice? 
you know, of this particular mask as a clear reaction to your past in the TV camp that is, you know, you know, is always with you. It's been with you for the last 16 years. Uh, it seemed it seemed like something fun and exciting to do. Um, and I was I was kind of, you know, uh looking for a challenge and mm -hmm. that opportunity kind of fell in my lap they called and asked if i would be interested in doing it and i remember seeing this youtube video years ago of ryan reynolds doing the korean version in a uh, unicorn costume and i remember thinking if i ever had a chance to do that that would be so fun to be able to just perform <laughs> and and nobody knows who you are and so when they called, I was like, absolutely, I'm in. And then when they gave me choices of what to pick, like, hey, which costume would you want to do? The Rottweiler stood out to me because I got bit by one when I was a kid. I got bit by a, a Rottweiler. Um, this lady that my mom looked after, um, she was a blind lady and she had a, a, a Rottweiler to kind of help her get around the house. And she promised me this dog was kind and sweet, and I reached out to pet it, and it and it bit my leg and and scared the living daylights out of me. And um, I, I I think I was terrified from that moment on of Rottweilers. So I felt like if I embody this, you know, this fear and become what I fear, that was something cathartic about that. <laughs> yeah, and you also wanted to bite everybody watching the show. I definitely wanted to fool everyone, um, <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun, though. It was it was definitely hot. It was very difficult to perform and sing in this yeah. costume, and but I had a lot of fun. Did your friends catch you and actually get that it was you? Okay, <laughs> so immediate. They <laughs> they started texting me when they started showing the commercials. <laughs> Wow! Before the before the season even started, they had just one little clip of me singing, and my buddy was like, "You're not fooling anybody in that dog costume." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I had to lie, lie, lie. So. Oh wow! Fantastic. The single of "World on Fire," which we actually just saw, uh, it was released last year, and as I read, it was one of the songs inspired by the pandemic, by COVID, by the COVID situation. How about the new one, Heavy is the Crown, which you're gonna see up next. Uh, what is this heavy crown, you know, and who wears it? Who carries it? Um, so World on Fire was actually not inspired by the pandemic. It was written months before it and oh, really? it was so it was so crazy because we wrote the song when australia was burning mm -hmm. and um you know there was there was still you know a lot of pr police brutality going on then you look at instagram you see stuff all the time and all of this yeah. kind of informed the lyrics and then COVID hit and we were just like whoa did we just like tell the future <laughs> you know <laughs> um and then heavy is the crown um i think everybody wears it i think we mm -hmm. all have this responsibility, every decision we make matters, you know, and I think um, when you look at um, it, your life uh, and the decisions you have to make, um, I think I think we all can feel that weight on our shoulders um, or on our head. And uh, yeah. I think I think if if World on Fire was a um, a snapshot of the world, you know, hey, this is what our world looks like. Yeah. I feel like Heavy as the Crown is like, we all have a responsibility to do something about that. Yeah, that's a good you know, point. It's, um, and, and I felt like it was a, it, it was kind of a juxtaposition between, you know, here's, here's, you know, our world and what are we going to do about it? You know, we all have this, you know, this this weight and responsibility to do the right thing. Yeah. So, Chris, do you want to introduce a video for us? Yes, I do. 
Um, how, how do you want me to do this? Uh, uh, the TV hi. way. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Chris Daughtry from the band Daughtry, and this is our latest video, Heavy as the Crown. Hope you enjoy it. So, Chris, you had already a 10-year story in music uh, before that, but you were tagged, you know, as the new guy coming out of American Idol talent show. Um, would you do it again today? Okay, you did the masked singer, but, but that was a different thing. <laughs> yeah, would you, yeah. Would you do that talent show again? Or maybe you wouldn't do it, not at all. I mean, maybe for the same exact reason. And um, do you think that, you know, a show like that needs a Chris Daughtry as much as Chris Daughtry needs a show like that? And how is the industry treating you uh, 15 years after that? Uh, you know, do you have more wow. pros or cons, you know? Yeah, that? <laughs> um, no, it's a, that's a loaded question. Uh, I think I don't regret, uh, I, I'm very grateful for American Idol. I don't regret going on it at all. As a matter of fact, I think um, I'm not sure if I would have been discovered in the way that I was discovered had I not gone on, gone on the show. Obviously, since then, things like YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and, and apps like that have, have really been um, crucial in getting people recognized and, and getting talent out there. When I was uh, going on American Idol, all we had was MySpace, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have these outlets to get in front of millions of followers or um you know getting getting that kind of recognition so for me going on television was was um it felt like the right thing to do and i think that worked out at that time i don't know if i went on it today if nobody if no one knew who i was mm -hmm. and i went on it today i'm not sure I would be where I'm at right now. Um, I think everything happens for a reason. And yeah. I I think I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And uh, I went on at the right season. I think if I would have went on before that or after, I'm not sure if I would be here. So um, I think everybody's path is different. Um, do I think a show like that needs a Chris Daughtry? No, I don't want anybody <laughs> taking my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, do I think uh, it's a good avenue for people? I do. I think it's. I don't think it's guaranteed that if you go on there, you're going to end up where I'm at. I don't yeah. think if you go on there, you're guaranteed to end up where Carrie Underwood or Kelly Clarkson is. But I think it's entirely up to. At the end of the day, it's up to the the individual to put in the work. Sure. And do they, the industry still cuddle you, you know, for that? Or do you perceive a different feeling now? No, I think I think we've um, gotten a lot of respect uh, outside of that stigma that, that a lot of people think is associated with being on a on a reality or, or talent show like that. Um, I think we've proven ourselves uh, in the in the um you know in the industry and it, that it goes beyond just being lucky enough to be on a television show i think the music yeah. speaks for itself and i think the fans have transcended beyond the you know uh just there was there were the fans that knew me from the show and then there's the fans that never knew i was even on a show yeah and 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 found out about us because of the music. So um, I think I think it works both ways. And the ones that did know us from the show uh, are still around. And and then we've been very fortunate enough to pick up new ones along the way. And we've been very fortunate that that people like yourself uh, are still interested in talking to us. You know. <laughs> Yeah, good. And Chris, would you ever accept to be the judge 
in a talent show like American Idol, would it be good or bad for the new artists in front of you? And how do you judge, let's say, Adam Lambert's career, um, your colleague, you know, who ended up in the band Queen, starting just like you did from that show? Or a show like that? Would I, uh, would I be a judge? Um, sure i think i think it would be fun um i don't personally like putting people down um you know i i have a hard time with with um you know crushing people's spirit but at the same time i'm really picky when it comes to vocalists i'm really picky when it comes to singers so it would be a it would be a very tough position for me to be in um uh I feel like I would be somewhere between what, how Steven Tyler was, but maybe between Steven and Randy. Okay. Um, where I, I, I feel like Steven was was too nice. I think he was he was giving people credit for stuff that you know you're like I don't know if you heard the same thing I did, bud. Um, <laughs> Uh, as far as Adam Lambert is concerned, I am super pumped for that guy. I think he is uh, a phenomenal singer. Yeah. Incredible. Um, and Queen is very lucky to have him. And there's not many people that can tackle Freddie's uh, range. Sure. But that guy certainly has no problem doing it. And uh, he does it with... with uh, with power and and pizzazz and uh, I'm a big fan of Adam I think he, uh, as a as a as a guy as a singer I I, I love him to death I, I think he's I'm, I'm proud of him I'm I'm very yeah. happy for the success he's had with Queen yeah. and, and just as you he was in the right place at the right time so yeah and he, he, <laughs> see he came he came right after me and if I was on his season I probably people would be probably going to Chris Daltrey who you know <laughs> okay. <laughs> allora, dice... You also draw comics and uh, you publish a comic books, if I'm, if I'm correct. And uh, you act, as you already mentioned, um, in the Batman Dying Easy Easy fan film. Um, about acting, if I'm correct, you also were in CSI, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, about acting, do you consider it like a parallel career for you? And do you prefer to put some of yourself in fiction stories or to play actually real character? Is, is it a bit like, you know, making your own music instead of cover songs and vice versa? I look at it all as performing art. Um, you know, before I picked up a guitar and and ever uh, wrote a song I wanted to be an actor I wanted to be uh, I wanted to be Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, <laughs> you know I wanted to be an action star I always um, I've always been you know uh, attracted to to that sort of thing which is kind of why you see a little bit of that in uh, heavy is the crown video um, mm -hmm. you know I I've always been intrigued by the superhero genre and um and before i wanted to be an actor i wanted to be a comic book artist so mm -hmm. i feel like they all kind of go hand in hand and i i think with these videos i've been able to kind of merge all three together you know mm. the superhero aspect the the acting and the music and yeah. just put it all in one thing um and i and i do I do enjoy drawing from time to time. I don't do it nearly as much as as uh, you know someone who is a professional comic book artist. Uh, so it takes me a lot longer. And right now, my brain is so focused on the music that yeah. I haven't picked up a pencil in so long. Um, <laughs> but um, there's tons of art of mine that's laying around this room. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as a matter of fact. This is a uh, this is a piece that we're selling on our website. Oh wow! Uh, um, let me see if I can see it. Yes. Okay. It's yeah. Batman. Yeah. Um, and that's on our website. So I, I do have some art that we that we put up for sale. But um, 
Uh, right now, it's it's all about the music and and this album that I cannot wait to get in people's ear holes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Allora, dice yeah. Chris, your cover of Lady Gaga's Poker Face had huge impact a few years back. Uh, and now you're go we're going to listen uh, to your version of Temple of the Dogs, Hunger Strike, that uh, features La Jean Witherspoon. Um, you like a lot to play and to play with cover songs. Um, did your approach change um, after the controversy over your version of Johnny Cash, I Walk the Line, which, you know, somebody said that you, you, you did too personal and there was some, some controversy around it. And which cover are you the most proud of among, you know, all the ones you did, maybe for a uh, it has a particular meaning for you and in general how do you choose you know the covers and what will be next after this hunger strike well i don't um i think the controversy uh, of doing walk the line was completely blown out of proportion uh that was that was me doing live uh the band live their version, version of, yeah of of uh I walked the line. They just didn't put that in the in the show, um, even though I had told them what it was. Uh, but as far as how I approach cover songs, you know, I like to I like to cover songs that, um, you know, that that had an impact on me as mm -hmm. a singer. Songs that that I wish I wrote, <laughs> you know, songs <laughs> that songs that are just um, you know in, infectious. And that I can't get out of my head, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and and doing Hunger Strike was no different. That song was, you know, as much you know how I, I how much I was inspired by grunge. That yeah. song is like grunge in one song. You know, that is all the '90s in one song. All the yeah. voices, you know, uh, Chris Cornell and Eddie Vedder are like the defining vocalists of the '90s. Yeah, and. Um, at least to me and uh chris cornell has been one of my heroes ever since i heard of who chris cornell was um and uh so i was very very happy that that got the opportunity to to cover that song and and to do it you know we wanted to really you know stick to the original um i didn't want to deviate too far from the original um wanted to really um honor the original and and do it as close to it as as possible uh as far as um how what's next uh yeah. i don't know um <laughs> we've been we've been actually you know we just started playing some shows recently and we've been covering man in the box so mm, from alice yeah. in chains yeah 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 so that's been a lot of fun so is it gonna be maybe the bonus track on the next album <laughs> uh no we don't have it recorded yet we've just been playing it live so um we'll, i we'll tried what, okay i know i know <laughs> so no covers no cover songs on the record not this no. time not this, time. Not this we, time we keep we keep talking about doing just a covers album like all all the songs that that we've covered over the years and yeah and go and actually record them we've talked about that but uh have yet to make that happen so chris thanks for your time for this interview it's been a pleasure talking to you again thank you thank you so much great to talk to you as well so let hunger strike be will you introduce it for us yes thank you so much guys here's our new uh version <laughs> here's our latest version of hunger strike our cover of hunger strike featuring lejean witherspoon of seven dust I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Grazie. Ciao, Chris. Have a nice Thank night. Thank you. Grazie. Bye -bye. Ciao.